so simple. Why didn't I think of it before? Del T del X, A minus B squared, square root of T plus X. That's the scientific formula opening a path through the fourth dimension. Now I just walk through walls. That's great. <laughs> Back in 1948, when I was 10 years old, we knew that the world was going to be different. Uh, revolutions in transportation, plain travel was uh, readily available for the first time. People had television sets in their homes, and we could no longer ignore nuclear power. It was part of our lives. We knew that our parents and teachers really didn't know very much about this stuff, so we had to go to other sources. So I had this comic book as my guide. In that comic book, a scientist was going into a very futuristic sort of laboratory. This is where my crew is studying the seventh, eighth, and ninth dimensions, said the scientist. And the boy reporter had a thought balloon that went up, uh, boom, boom, boom. I wonder whatever happened to the fourth, fifth, and sixth dimensions. Well, I've been wondering ever since. Captain Marvel talked about doing dimensions in the laboratory. But now we actually do do dimensions in a laboratory. In 1948, nobody could imagine computers that enable us to see visualizations of higher dimensions, which we couldn't see 100 years ago when people started doing this in the first place, which we couldn't see back in 1948 or even dream of. Tom Banchoff is a pioneer in visual mathematics. In the 1970s, when computers first had sufficient power, he began to visualize a four-dimensional object called a hypercube. When we saw that hypercube for the first time, we knew we were seeing something totally different that moved in ways that were totally separate from anything we had seen before. And we were utterly taken by it. I realized I'd never completely understand it. The fourth dimension itself is beyond us as much as the third dimension would be above people living on a two-dimensional plane. But it's worth the effort. You'll never run out of challenges. And it will never get boring, as far as I can see. The fluid motion of the hypercube seems to violate the rules of perspective. But its shape can be better understood as being part of a sequence of lower-dimensional figures. Imagine a point in space. If we move the point to create a new point and connect them, we create a one-dimensional line. If we move the line perpendicular to itself and connect the points, we have a two-dimensional square. If we move the square perpendicular to itself and connect the corners, we have a three-dimensional cube. If we move the cube perpendicular to its edges and connect the corners, we have a four-dimensional cube, a hypercube. Does the fourth dimension exist? You know, are there really hypercubes out there? Will we ever see one? And what does the visualization on the computer have to do with some real object? Well, mathematicians actually turn that question around. You can ask whether a square exists. There are no perfect squares, but we all have a conception of a square and we can recognize a representation of a square even though we know it's not perfect. The real square is, is an abstraction. Something in the mind of God, some of the Greek mathematicians would have said. Mathematical space really exists only in the mind. The world of pure shapes is something which is a mental construction something inhabited by perfect points that have no thickness, just location, perfect straight lines, perfect squares. Nobody has ever seen a real cube. So in a sense, a square and a three-dimensional cube have the same degree of reality. But if you believe that, a four-dimensional cube also has that same degree of reality. Because four-dimensional space exists only in the mind, Bankchoff 
cannot see the hypercube directly. Instead, he observes its projection moving in three-dimensional space. A three-dimensional cube rotating in space creates a shadow that shifts and changes on a two-dimensional surface. Even if we cannot see the cube, we can learn to recognize it by the changing pattern of its shadow. In the same way, Banshaw can study the behavior of a hypercube by watching its three-dimensional shadow. Are there four-dimensional phenomena which we see? Well, I don't know. As a mathematician, I don't ask that question. I can tell you what the object would look like if it did exist without ever asking the question of whether it does or not. If somebody does discover something that looks like this, I'm sure I'll be called in to explain what it's going to do next. And I can show you what it will do next. But that's not why I do it. One of the advantages of studying higher dimensions is that it makes you much more sophisticated about your own. I see geometry in everything. When I walk down the street, I'm always fascinated by some form. I love seeing patterns. I love looking up and looking at windows and ledges and seeing the, the way different objects fit together, especially if you position yourself in just the right way. Shadows are a great thing to watch. I've always enjoyed watching the moving shadows. We never really see a three-dimensional thing all at once. Even looking at a cube, a block, you only see half of it. And as you walk around it, you have to piece it together. Your problem, if you came into this building for the first time, might be to find my office. But after you've walked around this building for a while, I think you become very familiar with it. You never see it all at once. And yet it is something that is a shape in your mind. So we learn to know a shape by seeing lots of different views and relating them in our mind in some sort of network of associations. By that same sort of process of exploration, you can get to know a four-dimensional shape. I see that again and again with my students over the course of a semester. What I try to do with my students is get them to pay very close attention to what they actually see in three-dimensional space. Speaking as a mathematician, I feel the same way. To take that intuition and try to interpret objects that come from higher dimensional space. It's always easier for me to understand things when I can see them. Well, now you can see them. They're I remember trying to draw one of them for a final exam. <laughs> yeah, and now, now you don't even have to because we have these real cheap and easy computers that will rotate it in four space and see how it comes back together. I like to go to different churches. And when I go into a church, there's always a great deal of geometry. Of course, that's very distracting. I don't know whether a geometric intuition that comes during a religious service is an inspiration from the Holy Spirit or a temptation from the devil. 